Think back to the very first great lesson when the earth was first formed. Think of how long it took for life to appear on earth. From the first life in the seas, to the plants and amphibians coming on land, to the rise of the age of reptiles, to the large dinosaurs and the early birds, and then we have the beginning of mammals. At the very end of the timeline, a new species appeared on planet Earth for the first time. This species had some unique qualities of the hand, heart, and head, the ability to make tools, to think and problem solve, to think about their own thinking, and the ability to love even things they can't see. Scientists believe that the earliest humans first appeared on Earth about five to seven million years ago. Some of the earliest remains were found in Africa, although they also know that other groups of humans were found in Asia as well as other parts of the world. As you can see from the chart, the humans used whatever was right there in front of them, and they ate whatever that they could find, whether it was part of the carcass of an animal, but it would have been raw meat because they did not have the ability to cook it or in any other, take care of themselves in any other way. The group in Africa tended to be more nomadic in nature, meaning that they traveled for their food. They often traveled alone or in small groups. About 200,000 years ago, one of these groups made an important discovery that would forever change the shape of mankind. Nobody really knows how or why this occurred. Maybe it was just a bolt of lightning struck something, or Maybe they had struck two rocks together, maybe some flint, and it caused a spark. But whatever the cause was, one of their first inventions was that of fire. Fire allowed them to, to protect themselves as well as to cook meat and to provide warmth to them whenever they needed it in the weather. I'd like for you to take a moment to look at these two men sheltering in probably what looks like the entrance of a cave or some type of overhang as they're making their fire. I'd also like to go back and tell you a little bit more about the people that lived in Africa and maybe a little bit about the people that lived in Asia. So this group of early humans in Africa, sometimes they did travel alone or sometimes they may have traveled in small groups, but they were nomadic, meaning that they had to travel around to look for food or sources of water. Even though this group seemed to be a tribe, they really weren't. If somebody within their group got sick or got injured, they would just simply leave that person and then they would continue on their journey. Now I wanna switch gears to the group that was in Asia. They also formed in small groups, but they formed more like of a tribal connection. They worked together, they lived together, and they took care of each other. If one of them was to get sick or get injured, the whole tribe would stop their nomadic life and they would stay and they would shelter and try to care for that person. So my question for you then would be to think, which group do you think would survive more? Some of you might say that it was the group in Asia. Some of you might say it was the group in Africa. And interestingly, it was the group in Africa they were able to move on to continue to do what they needed to do in order to survive. Eventually, the group in Asia, a lot of them did die out. We also know that the different species of humans did interact with each other in some ways. At the end of this time period, though, you can see on the chart, there was a great ice age. As time passed, the early humans became much more sophisticated in making tools. They were able to carve stones with other stones and shape them into useful tools that they could use to cut trees, which they could then turn to also use for supplies that they needed, maybe for shelter or to make weapons to defend themselves or for hunting. They also were able to use these tools to better prepare the food that they hunted, such as being able to skin the hide off of an animal. They were then able to take those hides and make clothes and to use other body parts of the animals to create different types of utensils like um, water jugs or maybe a bowl or something. So they use these tools in amazing ways. They still tended to live near bodies of water, specifically around rivers, because it provided a clean water source for all of their basic needs. 
They also tended to live in more tribal units so that they could work and live together. As you can see, they continued to live in these tribal units, developing more sophisticated clothing, tanning of hides, and different types of tools, each one with its own purpose. Some for spears, some for skinning the hide, some for uh, digging in the ground. They were able to build communities within this group. And they were most likely developing more sophisticated language. There was an ice age at the end of this period, and there was also a great uplift in the land. Yet these humans continued to develop and adapt to their, to their um, environment. They began to make more sophisticated tools out of wood and out of bone. So for example, at the bottom of this chart, you will see um, look like an early form of a sickle where maybe they were growing crops and they were starting to harvest the crops. They also had the beginning of a needle where they could start sewing. And at the very end of this timeline, you will see at the very, very end, it says 1 AD. And that is the beginning of when humans begin to mark their own time, which will continue our story.